Hello again. Welcome back to the Olden Shot. As usual, there's been a change of plan. We were going to do an old camera, um, see what sort of results you can get from a late 50s, early 60s uh, compact 35mm camera. But a friend of mine actually gave me a camera and after changing the light seals and giving it a general dust down I decided to give it a go and I had some former pan 200 and um, another change of plan was I had two rolls and I was going to run one roll through one camera and another roll through another camera and then have two videos but I've decided to make this about former pan 200 and uh, show the results from both films. Former pan 200 I have had mixed results from and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the cameras then we'll have a look at the results and then we'll discuss the film. The first roll of former pound 200 we ran through the Ryko KR10. This is the camera that was gift from a friend Pete. Um, when I went out I used the Rikonon 50mm f2 standard lens. Um, Part of the gift from Peter was also the Vivitar 70 to 210 zoom lens, which is maximum aperture from 4.5 to 5.6. Um, it's a one touch zoom, which um, the trouble with one touch zooms is if they're heavy, they suffer from something called lens creep or zoom creep when the lens is on the front of your camera and you're walking along um, because it's heavy it has a tendency to make the camera lean forward and the zoom creeps out not the end of the world just a minor irritation <clears throat> I also had two K mount lenses from uh, previously um, one is the SM, SMC Pentax M 28mm 2.8. Um, I got this in a box of bits and bobs from the market. I think the whole lot came to four or five pounds. As you can see, it's a small lens and it's got a nice feel with a nice chunky pattern on the, the grip bits. Um, I also have a Shinon Auto Shinon Zoom MC Macro 35 to 70 millimeter and the maximum aperture is between 3.5 and 4.5. This is a two touch zoom so you turn it to zoom so there's no zoom creep and that came with a camera that was gifted by a friend I'm afraid the camera was beyond salvage but the lens is uh, clean with the snappy diaphragm and scale mount so it's um, it's not bad I suppose it tells you something about how easy it is to find lenses for a K-mount Pentax K-mount camera in that I've got four lenses here, four different manufacturers and um, there's a wide availability of Pentax K-mount lenses but on the video um, it was a 36 exposure film uh, rather than write down what lens I was using, I came up with a simple plan. 36 divided by 4 is 9, so I ran 9 shots in sequence with each 
lens so it's easy for me to remember which was which. So we'll have a look at those now. The second film was run through this camera, which is the Minolta X300S. Um, and I used one lens throughout, which is the Minolta MDW Rocco 28mm f2.8. If we go close with this, you might see some white spots on the front of the lens. It's a well-known thing about this particular lens, it's called Minolta White Spot. Um, something about the uh, paint on the inside of the lens deteriorates over time, falls off, flakes off and goes onto the lens and manifests itself as white spots. Uh, um, I've had this lens for some time now, it doesn't seem to have got any worse. So I'm um, delaying taking the front element off to see if I can clean it. But I have to say that it doesn't seem to have any adverse effect on the photographs taken with it. So we'll have a look at the shots taken with this camera on the former Pan 200. On the first roll, taken with the Ryko, um, I mistakenly thought it was a DX reading camera until after I'd taken two shots, I think. Then I realised you had to set the ISO um, specifically. Um, I also, when I was taking the shots, I was reading what it was giving me as settings. I used it on aperture priority for most of the shots. And the readings seemed to me to be a bit optimistic um, when I was comparing it to my Sunny 16's calculations. So I think the meter in the Ryko is a bit um, 
optimistic and over over reading or reading it brighter than it actually was um, the shots themselves probably because of exposure variations were a bit grainy I suppose if you go to a beach in the sand everywhere it's going to be grainy but um, some of the shots I really like, some of them I found a bit muddy, but I think that's down to exposure rather than the, the film. Uh, they do say it has a wide exposure latitude, but I don't think it likes being underexposed at all. On the second film, um, it was in Newcastle. Um, places I've visited before in other um, videos. Uh, Newcastle University and also um, the area of St Thomas the Martyr Church which has a number of different war memorials and I took some shots there and also some shots of um, a particular part of the Civic Centre. Um, I also have done a bit of research on former Pan 200 and a lot of opinions were saying that it should be rated slower than 200. So I actually set it in this camera for an ISO of 160. Um, I also think that the meter on this camera is very accurate. So the shots in the Minolta are um, certainly better and I think a lot of it is down to the exposure. So the film itself, if you get the if you get the exposure right, it's very good. Um, it's uh, got good tones, uh, not too bad on the grain, and uh, reasonably sharp. However, I have to ask myself if you rate it at. 160 or 125 some suggestions were actually for 100 ISO it's bringing it into the area where there are some very good other films out there even former Pan 100 which I've used and is a decent film but it's also in the territory of Ilford FP4 which is an absolutely super film and if I had a choice to shoot, a choice between FP4 and former Pan 200 to shoot, I know which one I would pick straight away, and that's the Ilford film. So is former Pan 200 relevant? To me, possibly not. To other people who might want to do other things with it, then yes, it could be. Um, but I, th I personally think there are better alternatives out there if you're written the film at somewhere between 100 and 160 ISO. Tell me what you think. Do you think, it's, do you think I'm being unfair? Do you think it's a great film? Or do you agree with me that it's maybe a little bit irrelevant? Let me know. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon. And I am going to do the old camera, the oldest camera, the oldest working camera that I own. Thanks again.